Hello, I'm Seafood Source Editor Sean Murphy, and welcome to another edition of Seafood Source TV, the bi-weekly video blog where we bring you news, information, and insights into the world of the seafood industry. Topping our news roundup this week in the U.S., Darden Restaurants has moved to sell its Red Lobster chain of seafood restaurants for $2.1 billion U.S. dollars to San Francisco-based Golden Gate Capital. The move is hardly a shock. Darden, which also owns the Olive Garden and Longhorn Steakhouse chains, has been flirting with the idea of un unloading Red Lobster, which has struggled along with the company's other chains of late. Revelations by Darden's top management that the company is trying to focus on Olive Garden bolstered rumors that a sale was imminent, with only a staunch collection of Darden shareholders standing in the way. Those shareholders have been threatening to fight the sale in order to protect their dividends, but Darden chairman and CEO Clarence Otis announced last week that the company and the shareholders had come to terms with the need to sell off Red Lobster. Golden Gate is a multi-billion dollar investment group with ties to a number of industries, including restaurant and retail. It owns the California Pizza Kitchen and on-the-border restaurant chains here in the States, but those seem to be the most high-profile restaurants in the company's portfolio, and it appears to own no other strictly seafood restaurant chains. It remains to be seen what the future holds for both Golden Gate and Darden as far as their status as buyers in the American seafood restaurant market. Darden's remaining restaurant chains, of course, collectively offer a number of seafood dishes, but nothing compared to that of Red Lobster. No word as of this recording whether Red Lobster will close any of its restaurants or make any other changes as a result of the sale. We'll keep watching. In other buyout news, Hillshire Brands Company announced it is buying Pinnacle Foods for $6.6 billion U.S. dollars. Pinnacle produces a variety of retail products and brands, including the well-known frozen seafood product lines Van de Camp's and Mrs. Paul's. In a statement, Pinnacle CEO cited both companies' common passion for developing innovative products. There's no indication as of now that the sale will affect any of the company's product lines. Elsewhere in the world, European seafood conglomerate Icelandic Group is pushing into new territory, preparing to market products to Chinese consumers. The company has been outsourcing value-added processing to China for some time now, and with a new tr free trade agreement between China and Iceland coming into effect this summer, Icelandic is looking to sell products in Chinese markets. The company's Greenland halibut may be one species uh, going on sale, and Icelandic is also hoping to sell cod there too. The company operates a number of successful subsidiaries already in Europe, including the Saucy Fish Company in the United Kingdom. The European Commission is proposing a full, full ban on, on drift nets for fishing in European Union waters. Rules are already in place preventing use of drift nets to catch certain migratory fishes, but the Commission says that's not enough to prevent bycatch of marine mammals, sea turtles, and seabirds. If the ban is approved, it won't take effect until January 1st of next year. Greenpeace has released its Carting Away the Oceans report. The annual release ranks major grocery store chains worldwide based on the sus how sustainable their sources of fresh seafood are. This year marks the eighth edition of the report, and in it the group ranked Kroger, the world's fifth largest food retailer, near the bottom. Greenpeace claimed the retailer sells the most species classified as red list or too endangered to be fished sustainably. Kroger did not respond to Greenpeace, but Gavin Gibbons, spokesman for America's National Fisheries Institute, lashed out at this NGO in a statement calling Greenpeace childish. He charged Greenpeace with not disclosing its criteria and methods for producing its report and accused the NGO of rigging the rankings to make sure no one ever scores particularly well. Finally, this week, the Sustainable Fisheries Partnership has created a new website for information on fisheries management projects. The site, called the FIP Directory, offers details on 79 existing projects worldwide and allows visitors to contribute their new projects to the site's listings. The Partnership's Communications Director, Blake Lee Harwood, said one of the site's goals is to give a web presence to ongoing projects that might not have a website of their own. That's it for this week, but be sure to check back in two weeks for another edition of Seafood Source TV, where we bring you more news, information, and insights into the world of the seafood industry. Until then, I'm Seafood Source Editor Sean Murphy saying thanks for watching, and we'll see you online.